We try to bring the mind to stillness. We try to gain insight. Because we have goodwill and compassion for ourselves, we see that we're creating unnecessary suffering. And we want to learn how to stop. That's our initial motivation. So always keep that in mind. Sometimes the, the meditation can become dreary. But it seems like long afternoons so of nothing but in, out, in, out, in, out for the breath. But when you think about the insights you're supposed to gain, they seem awfully intellectual. But remind yourself of it. It's all for the purpose of finding out where exactly we're causing suffering and how we can stop. So the initial motivation is goodwill, combined with compassion. Compassion for ourselves, compassion for other people too. Because if we learn how to stop causing unnecessary suffering, it's going to be good for the people around us. One, we're not imposing our greed, aversion, and delusion on them. And two, we're setting a good example, showing this is how it's done. So the Buddha recommends, as he calls it, taking yourself as a governing principle. Remind yourself that you're here because you want to put an end to suffering, and this is the path. So you don't want to give up on that path, because if you gave up on that path, would you really be having compassion for yourself? You might have some compassion for your greed, aversion, and delusion, but they don't need your compassion. They've been ruling the mind for way too long. It's time that they be overthrown. And you overthrow them by developing more consistent mindfulness, sharper alertness, and more earnest ardency. You really want to do this well. So always remember your motivation. That's an important part of right effort, is keeping yourself as motivated, as the Buddha calls it, generating desire. And remind yourself that it is for the sake of true happiness. I was talking a while back with someone who was all tied up about the rules, the possibility of having broken a rule, a minor rule, and the serious consequences that would come from that. And as I reminded him, the Buddha didn't create the rules to send people to hell. I brought up a training. And the training is basically motivated by compassion. Now, that doesn't mean that you get sloppy about the rules, but it means that you don't beat yourself up over them. You recognize a mistake as a mistake, and then you spread again thoughts of goodwill again for yourself and for others, and you move on. This applies to the rules. It also applies to the meditation when things don't go well. Don't come down hard on yourself. Just chalk it up to the fact that meditation goes up and down. When you really haven't reached the, the ultimate point of gaining the Dharma high, you know, the first stage, stage, of stage of awakening, as long as you haven't reached there, there are going to be ups, ups and downs as a normal part of the practice. And even after that, there will be some ups and downs, but they won't be so serious, because you, you'll have seen the yes, the, what the Buddha taught really is true, and it's really worth holding on to. So ups are normal, downs are normal. So see them as normal. Keep your mind at a normal condition, realizing that you're on a good path. And it's good not just because someone else says it's good. It's going to be good for you. And it will create happiness inside, a happiness that you can depend on. So the motivation is goodwill. We say, may all beings be happy, and that includes us. And you include yourself in that all beings. That is not just a nice little thought. It's something that motivates you to do what you can to be skillful in your approach to happiness. And that's how goodness and happiness get spread around.